welcome to another Chelsea chat. And last night it was Chelsea nil, Brentford two. And <laughs> sometimes the team that you love are so bad that you actually laugh. I, I'm, I'm terrible for dealing with crisis, for dealing with stuff that that really grabs me by by laughing and and joking about it, you know, which doesn't go down well at, at funerals, obviously. But uh, yeah, I, I I honestly I'm I'm gobsmacked last night. They brought Frank in to try and give well, it's a PR stunt, isn't it, to shut to shut a lot of the fans up, but it's not working. I didn't realise that Frank hadn't won a game in 2023. And I think it's his last 19 games, he's won one game. So you replace Potter. No, let's go back to the start of the season. Let's go back to the start of this tenure. So Roman loses his club and his UK properties and, and whatever else, which I think will end up in a legal battle in years to come. So Bowley and Clear Lake take over and they come in and they spend 300 million, I think it was in the, the first transfer window on we had to replace Rudiger and Christiansen so they bring in Fafana and uh, Koulibaly Fafana looks a player even though last night some of his mistakes were horrendous he's only a young lad he's still learning Koulibaly looks as though he's in retirement mode most of the time certainly not the all-powerful controlling centre-back that Napoli had for years and and, and players that, that just haven't cut it. Raheem Sterling looks a pale, pale, pale shadow of himself and yet he still gets in the side, which I blame Frank for last night. So they come in and what do they do? The first thing they do without any infrastructure in place is they get rid of Marina Graniskaya, Peter Cech and various other Bruce Buck, various other people that know how the club works, know what the club ethos is, could have helped them transition, gone overnight. Marina, breaking her contract, cost us 34 million apparently. Oh, a gratitude payment, 34 million. That was a contract break if ever I, uh, if ever I saw it. So there we go. We've got no infrastructure. We've got no one overseeing uh, transfers. Who can we get in? Do you think we should have got someone a bit like Peter Cech, who knows the Premier League, knows world football? Um, Marina Granaskaya, who's uh, basically, I know she's had her critics, but most of the time gets really, really good deals for Chelsea Football Club. Eden Hazard being my case in point but loads of others as well. Who should we get in? An established football person? No, I'm a hedge fund manager who's got some sports franchises in the States. I know what I'll do. I'll make myself sporting director and CEO and everything right down to kit man. So I'm sorry, but Todd Bowley gets this pass because he saved the club. Yeah, he saved the club by winning a tender. And if he hadn't saved the club, another group would have come in and saved the club. And I would suggest they'd have probably run it a lot better than this lot of running this shambles. This, excuse my French for younger viewers, shit show. It's, it's just a joke. So we've got Tuchel. We've got Tuchel who sees this happening first hand behind the scenes. He's not getting it filtered back. He's seeing it first hand. He apparently, allegedly, gave Bowley a list of players that he wanted. Only one that he got, a Bamiang, and the other ones we missed out on when we were in pole positions. We missed out on because of Bowley's bargaining techniques. This is allegedly. So, allegedly... Bowley and co like visit in the dressing room. Tuchel wouldn't allow it. Tuchel then, allegedly, in front of all the players, 
told the the new owners that they didn't know what they were doing from a football point of view in no uncertain terms and so he was gone but I think we all need to say thank you to Thomas Tuchel now because without his was it 10 11 points at the start of the season out the first seven games we'd be in 18th place now in the league fighting relegation not looking like we're going to win a game and I look at our final games is it four against the top four and I can't see where we're getting a point from. Maybe, maybe our saving grace might be Nottingham Forest at home. Because up until they play us at Stamford Bridge, they're rubbish away. But they beat Brighton 3-1 last night at home. They are a different side at home. But even so, they're fighting for their lives. They're fighting for their lives. Our lot wouldn't know what a fight was if you took them to a a matchroom boxing event they wouldn't know what a fight was they don't they haven't got fight in their bodies i don't think i've just watched the frank lampard um post-match press conference or oh, i can't fault the players application i can if they if they can't run for a team managed by a club legend who are they going to run for i mean i mean this was a pr stunt frank's not a great manager did a good job that first year for us i, I, I I give him credit where credit's due. And Everton wasn't the best job to take over. But he hasn't. I mean, last night that team sheet came out and I thought we're going to lose. I thought we're going to lose. Why, are you, why when you're playing against a physical side, you don't give that David Datro for Farna a run? I don't know. Yes, he's raw. He's very raw. I watched him in the development squad game against, I think it was Arsenal. He scored and he was a right roughhouse. He was a right rough house. Why you don't give him a run with nothing, nothing to lose? Abamyang was back on the bench and then come on. And, and to be fair, you know, he had a couple of chances that he didn't do much with. But to be fair, you know, he, he's hardly played a game. I'm not banging this on Abamyang, although I am because at the start of the season when he got his chances, he looked like he wasn't interested, and we couldn't even give him the excuse of being rusty then. Why not playing that for Farner? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Why they're not playing some of these young lads? Sterling, woefully out of form. Gallagher, love him to bits for his effort. Headless chicken. Headless chicken. The only thing that, that makes it look as if he's not making loads of bad decisions is that all those around him are making even worse ones. Apart from Kante last night, in that first half, we were shocking. We were shocking as a team. Right away from Kepa, who, whose distribution was awful. Kovacic couldn't pass to... Uh, I think he had temporary colour blindness. It was just it was just awful. So the, the, the team comes out. We've got, we're playing a false number nine because Sterling hasn't got the physique. And, and at the moment, he hasn't got the speed or the skill to cause... Uh, people problem back in the day I would have said oh they played him up front because he's got a low centre of gravity and it's it's going to be hard for those centre halves to cope with him but no not this season all he did last night was run straight into him the way he's done the way he's done all season I don't know about colour blindness I think he's just blind you get a great big bloke in front of you or I'll run through him so anyway that team sheet came out and um, the only credit I will give to Frank Lampard last night is that the second half, he changed to a 4-3-3. And we, for that first 10-15 minutes of the second half, we actually looked like we might stand a chance of getting back in that game. Now, the first goal that come off Aspie, the, the corner that come over, that was just bad luck. You know, an own goal and uh, coming at him at speed. Didn't see it to the last minute. It could happen to anyone. People were saying, oh, well, why, don't, why didn't we have someone on the post? We don't have... We don't have people on the post, so it's it's not worth saying why. It's not worth blaming Lampard for that. We just don't have people on the post. We didn't un under Potter. We didn't under Tuchel. I would personally have someone on the post, but they don't. We can't look for critique where there where there is none. Second goal. I'm trying to think who it was. The the guy is so left footed. It's uh, he, he should have got a roll in my left foot. But instead of Daniel Day Lewis, but the bloke so left-footed, and uh, we let him put it on his, on his left foot. 
we don't take him down the channels. We 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 let him turn inside us. He gets a uh, a deflection. It goes over Kepper two 0 They weren't great. They weren't they weren't as good as the the, the Brentford that beat us four one at the Bridge last season. They they were off. They were off. They hadn't won in seven games. They hadn't won in seven games, and and they were so far off it. It was unbelievable. And they're still better than us. They're still better than us. We've got no spine in that side. Got no spine. Got no urgency. That first half, oh, well, we had 60% possession. Yeah, about a mile an hour across the pitch. What is wrong with these guys? Have they got no pride whatsoever? I, I just don't know. We look like a team, and I'm going back to Bowley. We look like a team that's had how many how many new signings is it since he's been in? Someone told me I think it's something ridiculous, like thirteen new signings. We look like a team that's had thirteen new signings, not just thrown into the team, but thrown into the squad, thrown into the training regime. People from all different places don't all speak the same language. New new to uh, London, new to the UK, a lot of them. And uh, just throw them all in. Just throw them all in. But don't sign a centre-forward of any note. Well, sign a young one, but don't give him a chance. And um, don't sign um, a defensive midfield player. And don't sign a goalkeeper who's capable of saving a shot from outside the area. I don't, I don't understand. Get the spine right. Check. Terry. Lampard. Drogba. It's not rocket science. Go to any team that wins any league in the world and they've got that spine. And we haven't got it. And on top of that, we've got a load of players that don't want to be there. See Etch on the bench last night. What's the point? What's the point? Why not Why not give these young players a go? You know, Chukamaker, throw him on. For Fana, give him a go up front. Let's see what they're made of. We can't do no worse. We're not going to, with that team, with that team that, that Lampard's picking and these players, we are not going to beat one of these top sides. Our best chance is Bournemouth away where we don't like going anyway or, or Forest at home. And I, and, I, and I don't even, I don't even think we're capable of beating them. We're sloppy, there's no urgency. I, I just I mean there's reports that Kovacic is is his agents talking to Manchester City and it's almost a done deal. Don't put him in the side. If 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 you know, and they must know behind the scenes, if this is true or not, because he's so sloppy, he's nowhere near the player he was last season. When I saw Cucurella was injured last night, I thought, Oh yes, God, we're gonna get something out of tonight's game. But no, Nothing there that Bowley and Co have ripped the heart out of our club. People say, oh, you've seen us play worse. Yeah, I have. I have. I think it was 78, 79, I think. I know people disagree. I think 78, 79 was one of our, was, was our worst season. Yeah, the players didn't have the ability that this lot have got. And they, and they most of the time... Gave hundred percent, so I can't even say that. But the club had an identity. The club had. We knew who we were. You know, the manager you'd come in, you know the style of play. I said I I, I got picked up this morning actually on Facebook by uh, by Jeff Price, and he was he was right. I said I feel a bit sorry for Lampard. He said don't feel sorry for these guys. You know they're well paid. They know the situation they're going into. And, and he's right. Lampard is really a sacrificial lamb. And they, they, they relied on his love of the club for him and, and his want to be a manager for him to jump at the chance of, of coming in, taking the pressure off them um, by getting rid of Potter. But Potter's not a bad manager. Potter isn't a bad manager. Everyone's saying, oh, get Potch in, get Potch in now. And, and well, I've, I'm doing another video on, on Poch. You know, he is the best of a bad bunch. Sacked by Espanyol. 
lucky to get the Southampton job. Did a good job there. Yes, brought a couple of young players on. Went to Tottenham. Five years, not one trophy. Yes, he got them to a Champions League final. Go have a look at that team that got there. Yes, they bottled it the year that Leicester City won it. Leicester City. And then he went to PSG. Couldn't win the, the French League in his first season. And after they'd signed Messi, Donnarumma, there was about five others, wasn't there? They had a big presentation. I watched it. Uh, to support their existing team with Neymar and Mbappe in it. He won the French League. People say, no, he won it by 15 points. Yeah, so he should have done. So he, so he should have done. He should have won it by about 30 points. What a team. And he couldn't get them to the, he couldn't get them to the uh, Champions League final. No disrespect to Pochettino. And when he comes in, I'll support him. I'm not too bothered about this Tottenham thing. It's not great. I don't like Tottenham. It's not great. But these people are professionals. They're big guns for hire. In they come. And, uh, but what's he going to do? Get Poch in now. Get rid of Lampard. It's the same bunch, mostly. Get rid of Tuchel. Tuchel, we've got 11 points out of seven games. Yeah, and if we had to add, we'd be facing relegation. Get rid of Tuchel. Get rid of, get, get, get rid of Potter. Get rid of Potter. Now, tonight, get rid of Potter. T to do what? <laughs> to do what? Oh, get Frank Lampard in. He's a club legend as a player. We all love him. But he's only won one game in the last however many out of 14 <laughs> before he took us over. Sack Lampard! Sack Lampard! Get potched! What? If you was Poch, would you come now? Would you come? If you watched that last night, would you come now? No matter what team he picks, it's going to be wrong. He's not going to want that. He's going to want all them players that don't want to be there cleared out. And he's going to want to be able to walk on that training pitch the first morning with, I don't know, 24, 25 players max, depending on how he works. Probably 24 to equal sides. But maximum. That's what that's, that's what he's going to want. And uh, he ain't going to be interested in taking over now. I, I know everyone's saying, oh, it's a, it's a, he's an absolute, you know, it's a done deal. But no, it's not. Not till that contract signed. If I watched that last night and I see the way these owners have acted, they're just narcissists. Or they've got, they've got uh, you know, they're doing their, they've spent the money. Yeah, they have. It's not just about spending money. They seem to have just picked up any, go to Brighton. Brighton looks, Brighton looks good. Brighton's got a good project. Buy their sporting director. Oh, look, they look good. Buy, buy him in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leipzig look a good, uh, Red Bull look at like a, a good framework. Get get them in. What do they want? Oh, nothing, but don't matter. Get them in. Anything associated with Chelsea before under Roman, get them out. Let's all go down the dressing room after the game and, and tell them how embarrassing they are. What about the coach? Oh, don't worry about the coach. We're the owners. Right. Sorry, folks. I am sorry. Right. Uh, last night, Kepa gets a five. His distribution was absolutely shocking. I've seen 10-year-old goalkeepers hit their own players more than Kepa last night. Not a fault for either of the goals. Looked dodgy in the air last night, but that's because he is dodgy in the air. What do you think's more likely? Do you think Chelsea will get a point before the end of the season, or Kepa will actually come for a ball in his six-yard box? Probably Kepa, isn't it? <laughs> Aspie last night, unlucky, own goal, put a shift in like he always does, looked ring rusty, he hasn't played for ages, did okay, he gets a six. Fafana last night's going to get a five, a couple of sloppy balls. And mind you, how did that bloke, what was his name? I can't remember his name now, but the guy who put his head towards him, how did he not get sent off? You haven't got to make contact, it's just the aggressive nature of it. Went to VAR, no. And he did actually make contact. So how he stayed on the pitch, I'll never know. But there you go. That that, that wouldn't matter. It, it, you know, if they, they played us with eight, they wouldn't have lost. Yeah, Fafana gets a five. Thiago Silva, poor game by his own standards. Loads of loose balls. He gets a six. Chalaba, 5.5. Chilwell last night, 6.5. Tried getting forward. 
wasn't getting a lot of support defensively, bizarrely, with three centre-halves. Yeah, Chilwell gets a 6.5. In front of them, Enzo gets worse as the games go on. I think he's losing the will to live, let alone look up. Because when he looks up, there's no movement. There's no movement. I think that's getting to him. He gets a, a 6, some sloppy balls. Cover gets a 4.5. Every game, for me, he gets worse. Doesn't look like he wants to be there. Sloppy balls. Gives the ball away. Won it back last night. I've got on my notes. He won it back six times and then gave it straight away again. That's not cover. Kante last night is my Chelsea man. Imagine he gets an eight. I thought the little man was excellent. Despite all the rubbish going on around him, he was like a diamond in the rough. He really was. Then in front of him, Gallagher gets a five. Loads of running. The lad is Chelsea through and through. I I, I love the lad, but he's, for me, and I know a load of you disagree, he's not up to Chelsea standard. He does the same pressing job as uh, Mason Mount without the finesse or the, uh, the finishing product when Mason's on form. Not this season. You toss a coin. And there's nothing between them. Sterling last night. Well, this is this is a hard one. Because the first half, I thought he was absolutely woeful. Second half, when he had a centre forward in front of him, I thought he was a lot better. So over the course of the game, I'm going to give him halfway between the three that he would have got and and the six that he, that he got because of his second half performance. He gets a 4.5. He must, he must think he was... Stupid signing from uh, from City, or maybe he just thinks we're stupid, because there's no way that 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 player is anywhere near the same player that he was at City or Liverpool before that, or QPR before that. He's not even that player, and he was only about what 17, 18 then. I've already made my thoughts known on Aubameyang. We we did look a little bit better. We looked a little bit better second half. Maduke come on. He looked skillful. I'd, I'd have probably played him from the start. Mudrick came on. Always a danger. Even though you lose defensively when he comes on. Um, who was it? Who was it? Oh, it was. Um, yeah, it was Kante and Gallagher. They both did seventy-yard runs to get back and and close space down. I, I, yeah, that's what you need through the whole team. Because even with a bit of heart and a bit of resolve and a bit of will to win, you can you can beat sides like uh, Brentford as good as they've done over the last few years. That's all from me, folks. I'm sorry, bit of a rant. What can I say? Okay, I shall speak to you after. Is it Arsenal next? Isn't it next Tuesday? I'll be doing a little bit on Poch if it looks like he is going to actually sign a contract and really having a look to see if he's the the magical maestro that's going to turn that heap of dog poo into a bar of gold. Okay, thanks for watching. Speak to you soon. Please subscribe to the channel and throw the video a like. It helps me. But more importantly than all that, let me know your thoughts. That's why I do these. Okay, thanks for watching. Up to Chelsea.